Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here today and we're back with another CBGM update of my uh, Michigan College team in the, the online league for Draft Day Sports College Basketball 21. And well, we're today back today with a bit of a, a shorter episode, but we're just going to sort of talk a little bit about some of the things I'm, I'm learning as we're going through this first season. So this is the first time that I've ever been in an online um, league for, for the college basketball game, um, particularly in 21. And I'm still obviously getting to grips with some of the things that I'm, you know, finding that I understand, don't understand. I'm just going to just spend a little bit of time just, just generally talking about them in terms of the recruiting stuff that's happening. So in terms of the start of the season, the first several weeks is, is basically about recruiting, hosting recruits on campus, finding out what they like or dislike or what things they want out of a you know a college. And then basically next couple of weeks is going to be about going to their homes and, and pitching to them, seeing how much influence their parents have on them and working through that. So in terms of our, our Michigan team here, we have two scholarships available for next season. And well, my initial plan was to, as we saw, I think in episode one, in terms of the, the brochures that we get, um, was to focus on the Midwest region and then get a bit of a national report and and, um, and just, just see how that mixes. So I, I first mistake I pretty much made was that I didn't get the, the full blown, um, I think it's the gold report for, for the national region. I just got the, the basic primer. And the reason I did that was because I, I didn't think I had enough money to do both. I only had about a hundred and something thousand to play with and I thought if I spent 50% of my budget on that, that's probably about right and that's that kind of was where I felt it would go. Honestly, you probably should spend a lot more money on, on the, these brochures that you get, perhaps maybe 60 to 70% of your budget because the, the information you get in those is just so valuable. I mean, for example, if I go to the national region and we go to not my call and watch this, we go to the full recruit, recruit list here. And, and you can just see one of the issues I have now is obviously on the Midwest region where I got the gold report, I know exactly what the top 10 looks like for all of the key players in that region. And I'm, I'm up to, you know, up to date with all of that. But for things like Cali Jones, I know, look, obviously Cali Jones is probably not going to come to Michigan. But for me, in terms of understanding, do I have a shot at it? There's an awful lot of money I've got to spend, an awful lot of work I'd have to spend to try and work out where I am. Am I even on his list? Am I not on his list? You can see here, I sort of did it for the first couple of weeks, had a little chat with him. He basically wasn't interested and he, I'm not on his top 10, but it makes it incredibly difficult. So for example, I mean, I'll go to the international region just as an example, because I didn't get any reporting on, on the international region. If I go to um, Vlashlev uh, Le Le Lekhova, Lekhova, you can see here I'm ninth on his list, but I have no idea who else is on there, whether he's hot on anyone, he's cool on anyone. And it's making it very, very difficult for me to really branch out from the Midwest region, particularly where I'm Michigan. And I have a little bit of prestige. I'm obviously not an elite school. I, I'm sort of in that middle pack below sort of the top, you know, the top 30 schools in the nation. I'm sort of below that, to be honest. Which is, is a great challenge because, you know, obviously I'm, I can't just immediately go and try and get top recruits. I've really got to think about how I get some of the good four-star players in my region um, nationally and, and, and things like that. But probably the first mistake I, I've, I've made in this first season that I will definitely not make in the second season is that in terms of spending my budget, a huge amount of it needs to go into, um, into these reports because it just gives you a lot of insight. Um, the, the other thing that I think I did fairly well actually um, if we're thinking about how how it's been going so far is obviously i've got the midwest region report so if we go to like mark Hughes here for example i know immediately who's in the running for him i have a great understanding of where he fits in terms of the national and in terms of the magazine ranks you know i immediately have his stats as well um, as we'll see as he goes through because i've got the gold report i've got a high level understanding of, of how he looks and how his position is so i know he has no interest in me so i don't need to waste any time with him Likewise, if we go to someone like Dwayne Ward, you know, obviously I spent a bit of time looking at him, delving into how he looks. I'm I'm tempted on him. I'm probably not going to get him, but you know, immediately because I have the golden pool, I have a great understanding of how he fits um, and how he looks. And I get, you know, I've obviously been doing some of the uh, the, the, the 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 campus visits and and things as well with him. So I've got a good understanding. I, I tried with him. Probably not going to get him, but that's fine. I can move on. So. 
that's the first thing is, is that gold report is just so essential especially if you've got money to spend I would honestly say spend 70% of it on that because I didn't appreciate how cheap it was to do some of the other things like watch film add people to call lists host recruits visit recruits I thought it'd be a little bit more but obviously I obviously it would be if I was going internationally it cost me a little bit more money it cost me a couple thousand to host a, uh, an international guy versus a midwest guy where it's realistically I'm looking at like 500 600 dollars a time 700 dollars to visit them etc so that's my sort of big takeaway at the moment in terms of other things i think to be honest with you one of the things i found really valuable i mean we've talked about dan mccray for those of you who've, who've been chasing him i mean it's been advertised on the news so I'm, I'm not giving away any information here so we can talk a little bit around him i think it was good a good thing to just delve into some of these guys some of the elite guys and then get a feel for it you can see here that one of the things I've noticed that Ohio State is obviously number one at the minute. So there is always an outside chance that you can snag one of these top guys if they're in region and, and they like things. Obviously, I'm I'm still, I'm still eighth in the running, so I'm probably not going to get McRae, to be honest. I haven't offered him a scholarship. I've used my scholarships elsewhere. But I did try early, throwing him a scholarship offer, sending him a visit, scouting him, watching him live, just to see if I could get up his list and, and talking to him. I couldn't and I think one of the things I've learned from this is that it's always worth going after the top guys if you're a team like Michigan you know as I said we're not quite in that top elite group we're sort of in that bit below it we're not quite a team that sort of just needs to go regionally all the time but it's worth chasing after these big guys just to see if it can happen I mean for, for, for me it didn't happen with McRae um, we're not going to get him we tried I think I did everything right offered him a scholarship early scouted him hosted him texted and called him a couple of times you know obviously looked at that but in terms of ohio ohio have obviously probably done something very similar to me and i know i've been talking to to their um coach um human coach rizzo about this because i've just intrigued as to how he managed to get up there obviously he is sort of closer in region to, to someone like mccray so it's worth really thinking about region with some of these top guys if, if they're in your region it's worth going after them from someone like michigan Finding a bit of information, hitting them early, see if you can just prod that along a little bit. Didn't happen with McCray for us this year, but I'm hopeful in terms of that going forward next year, and I will certainly consider that going forward and not just be scared off by some of these five-star guys. So I, I think there needs to be a bit of a balance in terms of how I run a team like Michigan. I need to look at four-star guys in quite a lot of detail, particularly locally, but just to understand you know, which ones are good, which ones are not good, which ones I really want to chase. Um, so I have two, three, four options for each of my scholarships. So I've got in my head, you know, obviously I won't talk about it on camera um, here today because I don't want to give my game away. I don't want people to chase my recruits. But I know exactly the four guys for each scholarship that I want. And I know exactly what position um, I want them in and, and why I want them and how they're going to fit with my team. And I've been looking at at that and that's really valuable so that's probably my second thing i would say obviously a learning curve for me is go off the top recruits but make sure you have the backup options and you have an idea of how they look and you've talked to them and you understand the pitching ideas because if you don't get your first option you've got to go to the second one and pitch for them and i think that's that's an important thing to note certainly going going forward for myself other thing that i picked up on actually it was from cards um Carl's video that he did just on his, I think one of his Let's Plays that he's done recently. Um, for anyone who, who is in the CBGM and is interested to understand a bit more, go and look at his top 10 video he's just done and just watch him on some of the Twitch streams because he gives away a lot of really valuable information. And one of those things, if we go back to McRae, let's go back to McRae here at the uh, the top in terms of overall ranking here. One of the things that he gave away, which was really valuable, I, I didn't appreciate this until I got into the deep levels of recruiting now that we're in but the camps are so much more valuable than i thought they were i mean i i went and visited a couple of camps in in this um in this cbgm and um, recruiting period but this thing like here so it actually gives you information of how they performed at camp and obviously you get the emails about um the camps and who performed well and didn't perform well but it obviously gives you the scouting so we'll get more scouting because we've been to the camp but if the players, if it says here the player didn't perform very well, well, you know, if he's a five star prospect, he might be a very raw five star prospect. And is that really what you want? Do you want someone who's a very raw prospect at five star who could come in and possibly, because he's got his huge potential, could declare within one year, not really add any value to your program? Or in someone like McRae's situation, 
he's obviously going to be a one and done. I mean, that's that's a given. I mean, he he's going to be a top five pick probably if I'm saying um, sitting here now in in the pro game. But he was the MVP at the Indy camp, and Indy is obviously the top one hundred camp. So he is one of the best prospects in this uh, in this recruiting period. So anyone who's like a top team is going to go after him because he, not only is he got, has he got these fantastic ratings. But he's the MVP of a, of a really prestigious camp against some of his peers. You know, if if it says the guy, you know, if you've got a guy who's a four-star prospect who's gone to an indie camp, for example, and let's say it says, oh, he's a top 10 player at that camp. Well, maybe he's a really good four-star. Maybe he doesn't have to quite have that potential, but he's already a really, really good college player. So maybe he's worth more to you as a college recruiter and getting him into your system than a five-star who's raw, like I said. So those are really, really important things to, to note. And other things I've, I've, I'm, le- I'm still learning a little bit with this, and I'll probably talk about this in another, another video going forward. But the parent level here is also an interesting thing. So you get an idea of what the parent control is. So if, if their parents are really controlling and they really think their son should really value, for example, playing time, when we get to the pitch, it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays off. Do you go with the parent control or do you go with what the player wants? You know, how much of that do you balance? Um, and and I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out because I've, I've been doing a little bit of work and a little bit of digging around to try and work that out. But for us at Michigan at the minute, our main thing is basically making sure that we um, have a good mix. We had two scholarships. I've offered them out. I'm not going to necessarily go through and, and share who I've, I've followed them to, for those who have watching. But you can basically, you've got to make sure you have a couple of guys you're after because you know people start to fall people start to declare and you've got to kind of react to that you can't just assume you're going to get that that first option so whilst this episode is not necessarily talking about in terms of recruiting who we're after and things and we'll come back probably post pitching um scenario and, and talk about who we've pitched at what happened um how things are playing out i'm really i'm learning such a huge amount about recruiting and i say go and watch cards videos they're so valuable Watch anyone else's videos who puts up information or, or notices on, on the CBGM for those who are in it. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm still learning an awful lot about this game. And whilst I'm expecting to make a lot of mistakes in this recruiting round for this first year, second year, I'm going to get better. We're going to get better. Hopefully we'll turn Michigan from a, you know, a, a high prestige team, but a, you know, a good, you know, good ranked team to hopefully an elite team. That's, that is the plan. And we'll see how we get on. But yeah, if you guys have had anything in terms of playing the game, maybe in single player or in, 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 in the CBGM and, and you've got tips or ideas or thoughts, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's help everyone develop to get better at this game because you know, we want the CBGM, I want the CBGM personally to be a, the best college basketball league out there for draft day sports and really, really a tough one for everyone to get into um in terms of recruiting. I I want that battle, I want that fight for recruits and and everyone sort of really understand it and share their ideas because it's only going to make the league more enticing, more interesting and more engaging. So let's talk about it. Let's see how it goes. Um, we'll be back next time, probably talk a little bit more about Michigan, a little bit more about the recruiting. But I just want to share some of my tips that I found as, as we've been going through so far. And um, yeah, we'll be back next time. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and, and like and comment. It helps us in terms of getting the, the word out for CBGM as well as my channel. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can keep continuing, keep learning, and keep building Michigan into a into a fantastic program in the CBGM.